Hey guys, and welcome to my Python Crash course, where we will focus on developing a solid programming foundation by mastering the basics of Python in only an hour. After completing this, you'll have a firm grasp of the programming fundamentals and will be able to move towards developing your Python skills by enrolling to my complete Python course 2020 on Udemy, where we'll cover various advanced features of Python, including how to control the keyboard and mouse, sending and receiving emails, as well as reading and writing Excel files or plain text files. Now throughout the course, I've provided detailed coding lectures to solidify your Python abilities, whilst getting you to think and solve problems for yourself. Now let's put that all to the side and let's begin by focusing on mastering the basics in this crash course. So let's begin by downloading Python for your operating system. Okay, so first of all, let's just open up our a browser window and let's go ahead and type in Python and hit enter. Okay, so now we should be greeted with a page similar to this one. Uh, and from here, you're just gonna go ahead and hit download Python. Uh, and here we can download the latest version of Python 3, which is currently Python 3.8.0. But with, uh, with my videos, we're gonna be using Python 3.7.4, but there's no real difference between the two versions, just a few bug fixes in the latest version. So this is how you download it for Mac. You just go ahead and hit this button, but for Windows, you'll need to go here and download the latest Python 3 release, which is also Python 3.8.0. Uh, and the same goes for Linux, really. You just download it, follow all the steps, just how you download a, re a regular program, uh, and it's pretty straightforward from there. Now, when opening a Python file on Windows, it's slightly different to Mac. You must open a blank file on Notepad and save it with a .py file extension, such as test.py. This saves it as a Python file, which can then be opened uh, by going to the file and right-clicking on it, and then pressing edit with IDLE. From here, you'll be greeted with a window where you can enter the code and run it just like you need to on a Mac. Okay, so now hopefully you guys have managed to download Python successfully. Now, if there are any issues, feel free to message me and I'll reply very soon. Otherwise, we can jump into the main contents of the course and start coding. Hey guys, and welcome to the first lecture uh, of our Python crash course. So first of all, we're just gonna begin by opening the Python program. So for Mac, you can just go ahead and hit the IDLE and it will open up a suitable workspace environment for us to begin coding. But for Windows, obviously you have to follow the tutorial that I mentioned in the previous video. So just go ahead and do that and we'll be ready. Okay, so today we're gonna be looking at something called comments. Now, comments are just things that you can uh, like little notes that you can put in the program that make it a bit more readable, a bit more understandable for someone else to read and go through and understand. So uh, to write a comment, you can just simply put a hashtag and the hashtag should be read if you're in the correct working environment for typing a Python program. And then you can say, this is a comment. So that's essentially what a comment is. Uh, let's go ahead and save our file by hitting command save or control uh, command s sorry and or control s and we'll save it into a new folder we'll call it python crash course and we'll go ahead, ahead and hit create and then we'll go and save it as comment or comments and you notice it's got the .py file extension because uh, it's a python file Okay, so now we've created our first comment. So this is essentially all comments are, but say we wanted a program to uh, like get a user to enter a variable, or not variable, sorry, a value, uh, say a number. Uh, so if that was in the line below, so if that was like here, this is the code for a user to enter uh, value say that was the code there now obviously we don't know the code yet to be able to do such a thing but say that was the code right there 
uh, above that bit of code, you might have uh, this. The well, you might say the code below allows a user to enter a number of their choice, and that just helps uh, someone who's reading through the program who d maybe doesn't know the, the language uh, very well to be able to understand exactly what's going on. Um, okay, so that's essentially all comments are. So thanks for watching and let's check out the next lecture where we will be taking a look at different data types and we'll be getting into some more uh, programming stuff. So thanks for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, and welcome to the next lecture of the Python Crush course. So today we're going to be taking a look at data types. Now here's the code from our previous lecture. We can just go ahead and uh, exit that. And we can go ahead and open a new window in our IDLE. Uh, and we can just save that by using Command S or Control S. And we can save that into our Python Crush course folder as data types. Oh, not that at data types. Okay, and we just hit save. Okay, so now we can, uh, because we don't know too much code already, we can just use our knowledge of comments, and I'll just show you guys everything via comments. Um, okay, so first we've. I'm just going to outline the four different data types that we have in Python. So we have integers. We have strings, we have booleans, and then we have floats, also known as real numbers, or real, also known as real. Okay, so what are integers? Now, you probably already know this if you have a decent knowledge of maths, but integers are just whole numbers dot g so for example they are one two three whatever that number is a billion if that's a billion whatever number that is but it's just essentially whole numbers okay and then what are strings now this is something you probably won't know if you have haven't done any programming in the past uh, at all. So strings are essentially just a, a list of characters. So you have them enclosed between uh, double uh, apostrophes or single apostrophes. And they can be a space, so that's a string because it's just uh, the character is a space stored in between the double apostrophes. Um, or you can have a bunch of letters, letters and numbers. So Hello world uh, with the z with the O's as zeros. So that's essentially a string. Um, and then you can also have the same things in between single quotation marks. They're both both strings. Um, or you can have just a bunch of symbols as well. So you can have any of these symbols up here. Um, and essentially a string is just any list of characters within a set of quotation marks or apostrophes. And now, what are booleans? So you probably won't know this either, but booleans are just, it's just true or false. So statements that can return true or false are boolean statements. So you can say, you can say, is x equal to or you, or you can say, sorry, is 1 equal to 2, or 1, sorry, uh, and then that will return true, obviously, that's true. So this isn't programming, this is just basic logic here. Uh, yeah, so that's just basic logic. Um, and you can also say is equal to 1, and that or 2, sorry, and that will be false. Um, so Boolean is essentially just true or false. Uh, and then you've also got floats, or also known as real, uh, and then that's essentially just any decimal number. So, uh, so decimal numbers, and that can be one point blah blah blah, or 
whatever number that is, point, whatever number that is, essentially just any decimal number is a float. Now to clarify this, we can actually go up here into run and we can run our program by clicking run module, which is also shortcut for that is just F5. So on Mac, you can click Fn and F5 at the same time uh, and that will run it. Or on Windows, you can just go ahead and hit F5 straight away. So if we go ahead and run that, this is just where the program like actually takes place. So if you were to ask for user input or something, the question will be shown here and then you and then the user can enter whatever they want. Um, so you from here we can also see that uh, what what these data types are exactly. So if we wanted to find out a data type, we can just type in type, which is just an inbuilt function into Python, and we can type in whatever we want. So let's type in a number. So we can type in the number five, and you can see it says class int. Now this class bit and these little fancy uh, greater than less than signs, so you don't really need to know what they are, um, but it, all you need to know is this bit of information. So this is an int, which is short for integer. Uh, and then you can also do that with a string. So say we had a bunch of letters and a bunch of numbers and we've done the same thing. So just recall the strings highlighted in green. Uh, you can also do the same thing with single quotation marks and it's highlighted in green again. Now, the reason why you might use double quotation marks instead of single quotation marks is because if you had a single quote inside there, so if you had something like the word don't, which is short for do not, uh, if you had that then, and you had single quotes, these two single quotes like sort of close off and form their own string over here uh, and leaves the T out, which is why you would use double, uh, double apostrophes um, to make it one whole word and one whole string. So if we go ahead and hit enter for that, you notice that it says str, which is short for string. And then we can also do a, another example with type, let's say one equals one, and run that, and we get bool, which is obviously a boolean statement, just as we've been shown here. And then you can also do, you can say type one not equal to one, and that is also a boolean, but it would return false. So if we want to actually see what these statements would return, we could do one equal to one, and it's true, and one not equal to one returns false. Now, you notice we have two uh, equal signs here. Um, so all that means is, is just comparing the two values. When you have a single equal sign, you're uh, equating, you're saying, you're assigning a value to something. So we'll take a look at this in more detail. So obviously I, I won't go into too much detail here. I won't explain it here, but we'll take a look at this a bit later. Okay, so now let's take a look at the last data type, which is a float or real number. So we'll do type and we can say 1.1 and it says it's a float, which is obviously expected. Uh, and we'll do another one just to show you guys. Uh, we can just do some massive number, 0.1. That's also a float. Okay, so that's it for data types. So thanks for watching and be sure to check out the next video. So thanks for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be taking a look at print statements where we're actually going to be displaying information to the user. And we're going to encompass the integers, strings, booleans, and floats that we've used in the previous lecture. So let's just close these windows and we can open up a new, ideally, um, where we can save it as into our Python crash, uh, crash course folder. We can save it as printing.py and we can hit save. Okay, so now I'm just gonna introduce you to titles as well. So we can also just give our page a title just by using a comment and we can call it printing statements to users. And we can save it as that. And that's just our title, just outlines what this code does overall. Okay, so a print statement. Now, a print statement is just this. This is all a print statement is. 
uh, and it will just display something to the user. So if we wanted to print a an integer, we can just say print one, and let's go ahead and run that. So I've just clicked Fn F5, if you can recall from our previous video, and all the program has done now is print the number one. Um, and that's an integer, obviously. And if we wanted to print, say, a string, all you have to do is enter the string you want into here. So that's the string we want. We save that. We can run it, FNF5, and it will just print that string out. Uh, and then same goes for, for a Boolean. So print true. And it will literally print true. And false is the same. And it will literally print false. Now for a Boolean, you, you need to remember to have it like so. So it needs to be a capital F or a capital T for true. Um, and that's essentially all you need to remember. Uh, and then for a float, you just enter the decimal number and it prints that out as required. Okay, so that's all a print statement is. And you can also just make several print statements if you want to print out various things. Remember, no capital P. Uh, you need to be, it's case sensitive, so you need to just remember to include the right uh, cases. So let's print out a million, and let's print out hello world, and then let's print out true as our boolean, and for our float, let's just print out a nice number, let's print out 10.99. Okay, so now if we just go ahead and run that, now you'll notice that all four of those things have printed out just as we wanted. So essentially that's all a print statement is. It's not too complicated and hopefully you guys can understand it. Um, and it's in like every programming language, it's one of the fundamentals. So that's it for print statements. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, and welcome to the next lecture. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at variables. So we can just go ahead and close our code from the next, um, from the previous lecture and we'll be using some of that code in this lecture. So we can go ahead and open up our IDLE again, and we can go ahead and save it into our Python Crash Course folder, and we can save it as variables, and hit save. Okay, so now let's give it a title of understanding and using variables. Okay, so what is a variable? Uh, well, a variable is just um, a, a like a thing that stores uh, like data. So, say we wanted to store an integer, or say we want to store someone's age. So, we can have a variable called age. So, we can just create one, and it can be called age, and we can say it's equal to uh, say say the person's twenty eight. So, it's equal to the age, and that's essentially um, all that variable is, it's just, it just stores their age. Now we use a single equals, you may have seen a double equals before, a single equals is used as a, a, an assigning operator, so you just give age, so the variable name is age, and you give it the value 28. Um, so that's all that bit does. Now say we wanted to store their name as well, so name is say they're called Dave, and Dave obviously needs to be stored in a string because it's a list of characters, and we can store it as Dave in a string using the apostrophes, the double quotation marks, sorry. Okay, and then if we wanted to print out their age, we could just say print age, very simply, and that age just refers to 28, which is their age. Uh, and then we can also print their name if we wanted to print their name. Now, if we go ahead and run that, it just simply prints out their age and their name. So now if we were to change the age and change the name, so change it to Spock, and if we run that, now it prints out a different age and name. So essentially, all this bit is doing is going back to this line of code and printing out the value it's assigned to. So this is the variable. 
this is the variable name and this is the variable name and these are two different variables that we've created right here uh, storing an integer and storing a string so now we can also do the same for holding a boolean and holding a, uh, a float we can also do so we can also do we can say say that age is something in in say in like we're also taking account of months we can also do 26.5 um, and then we don't want two variables with the same name you just can't have that uh, or you can't or you, or you can't have two different variables with the same name this is just essentially going to change the value of age to from 26 it's going to change it to 26.5 so, but we want two different ages for two different people. So we can say age one. Now, if we run that again, sorry, that's just going to print out that. But if we wanted to print out age one, we can just print it like so. And it will print out age one right here. Now, if we were to give our second person a name as well, we can call them Bob and run that. Sorry, we need to print out the name and we can run that now. Now it prints the first person and the second person. Now this is obviously stored as a real number or a float. Um, so it will print it out as a float essentially. Um, and then if we were to do booleans, so we can say, we can say like gender, we can we can say yeah let's go ahead and say gender and we can say gender equals we can say male so or we can say true and just like, just pretend there's a gender called true and a gender called false or whatever um, and then we can also just print out gender and that would just print true. So that's all there really is to uh, understanding and using variables. It's pretty straightforward and not, not too complicated. Uh, hopefully you understood that. But when we go on to learn some more complicated uh, or more advanced Python methods, which we'll be doing starting from the next lecture, once we're going to do that, you guys will become more familiar with some uh, more Python, like more of the Python language, and we'll be able to do some more advanced stuff. Okay, so thanks for watching and be sure to go check out the next lecture about numbers and how we can use numbers uh, by doing different mathematical uh, equations and stuff. So thanks for watching and goodbye. Hey guys and welcome to the next lecture. So today we're going to be taking a look at numbers and we're also going to be uh, taking advantage of uh, the variables, printing and different data types that we've used in the previous sections. Okay, so let's just go ahead and close our code from the previous lecture and we can open up a new page which we will give a title to and we'll call it using numbers in Python and we can save it into our Python crash course folder and we can save it as numbers and hit save. Okay, so let's begin. I'm just going to give you guys a quick task to do. So I want you to create two variables, one called x, one called y. And I want x to store the value of, say, 50 and y to store uh, 10. Okay, so let's just, let me just give you that task. So x, so variables x and y to store 50 and 10 respectively. Okay, so I'll give you a second just to go ahead and do that. Okay, so hopefully you've done that. Now I will just, I'll show you how to do it now. Okay, so you should already know, know this. We just create a variable called x and say x equal to 50 and then create a variable called y, y equal to 10. Okay, so now let's get into the main chunk of this video. And let's take a look at addition. Okay, so 
we're just going to print out x plus y. So that's all you have to do for addition, really. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just x plus y. And we can run that. And it'll print out 60, which is obviously 50 plus 60. And the next arithmetic method is subtraction. And that works exactly how you would think it would work, like so. And it's 40. OK, so now let's do the product. And we can do x product y. Now, we don't actually use the x to multiply, obviously, because that's just bit misleading we can use the star operator and that just means product and we get 500 and next we've got our division and we can do x divided by y so to divide you just use a slash just that's essentially just how you do it and if you run that we get 5.0 so we get we don't get 5 we get 5.0 which is a float it's just because it's a bit more accurate and it just indicates the level of accuracy that the program has ma managed to get it to so next we're going to take a look at a few more subcategories of division so we've got floor division and we've got remainders um, so for this section, we're just going to be creating uh, two new variables. We're going to call them Z and we're going to call them W and Z. Okay, so we're going to say W is say 2 and Z is 3. Okay, so now for floor division, what we can do is we can just print Z divided by W. Um, and all this will do is print out the number of twos or the number of w's that go into z. So like the like how many w's you can you can put into z before you can't put any more. So that's just like it's just the part without the remainder essentially. So now if we want to do the opposite and print the remainder, you can actually just use modulus, which is uh, just a percentage sign and if you go ahead and run that you get one again okay so now for our last part we're actually going to be taking a look at powers so say we wanted to print say we wanted to print 2 to the power of, of 3 which is obviously 8 well all you have to do is use two of these stars symbols and that will just print to the power and that's obviously A. Okay, so that's it for using numbers in Python. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Just a few new symbols that you need to get the hang of, and then the rest is isn't too difficult. So thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the next video where we'll be taking a look at comparison operators. So thanks for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, and welcome to the next lecture. So today we're going to be taking a look at comparison operators. So let's get right into it and we can just close the windows from the previous video and open up a new window in our IDLE. Okay, so we'll give it the title Comparison Operators. Okay, and we can save that into our Python crash course folder as Comparison Operators. And hit save. Okay, so from here we can take a look I'll just give you a quick overview actually of the different operators. So first we've got greater than, which of course is this symbol. Then we've got less than, which is this symbol. And then we've got greater than or equal to, which is simply written like this. Now, the brackets aren't part of the symbol, just in case you're wondering. It's just the symbol between the brackets, or the symbols between the brackets. And then we've got less than or equal to, which is like so. And next, we've got uh, equal to, 
So this is a comparison version, which is just two equals. Now the assigning, if you're assigning something, if you're saying x equal one, so you're saying the variable x is attributed the number one, like it stores that value. If you're saying that, then that's assigning it something. But if you're compare, comparing it, you're saying is x one, then you're using double equals. Okay, so then we've also got another last one, which is not equal to, which is simply uh, an exclamation mark and then an equals. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we can use these within a code. So we can just, it will return a Boolean statement. So true or false, we can say print. So is two greater than three? So that's using the greater than statement, or we can say print is two greater than three, or sorry, less than, is two less than three, which should return true, obviously, and this one should return false. And then we can also print is two greater than or equal to two. And then we can also do print is two less than or equal to four. And then we can use the double equals and we can say print is one equal to one. And then we can use not equals is one not equal to two. Okay, so each of these statements will return Boolean, uh, Boolean statements in return, so true or false. Uh, and if we go ahead and run it, we can see exactly what they return. Okay. So let's go through them individually. So you notice the first one is false. So two isn't greater than three. And then the next one is true. Two is less than three. Then the next one is also true because two is obviously equal to two, but it's not greater than two. And then the next one's true as well. So two is less than four, uh, but it's not equal to four, obviously. And one is equal to one, that's true. And then one not equal to two, uh, one isn't equal to two, so that is true. Okay, so within a program, you might be thinking, why are these useful? Well, say you've got a variable called x, which stores the value one, and a variable called y, which stores the value value three. Uh, so later on, we'll be taking a look at if, elif, and else statements, which are moving into a slightly more advanced sector of programming and are very useful, but within like, every programming language pretty much um, and they will be very useful to help you under like understand where this concept will be used of comparing variables and saying is if x is greater than y then do something but if x is less than y then do something else so that's how that's kind of the concept where you would use these comparison operators um, and you may not be using it within every program you make but they will certainly come in handy at one point or another. Okay, so then if we wanted to use the same concept here, we could just do print, we could say x less than y. So if it's less than y, then we can do that. But let's just go ahead and print a, a blank line just to space everything out a bit. So we'll have the top section, which is just these these re, uh, returns, return statements. And then we have uh, a bottom section, which is just this statement. So if we go ahead and run that, and you notice the space, which is just a blank print, and we've got true. So x is less than y, which is true. Now, what if we didn't have one of these variables? What if we only had x? What do you think would happen? Okay, well, it returns an error saying name error, name y is not defined, which means that y is not a, a, a variable within our program which has been made. So uh, obviously it returns an error because it's non-existent. So it's just impossible to understand whether x is less than y or not. Okay, so that's really it for comparison operators. So next we'll be taking a look at lists, which are uh, moving into the slightly more advanced sector, and we're actually gonna be pushing our skills and laying a solid foundation at the beginner level for programming, where you guys will be able to move into my next course, uh, where I give you a discount, and it will only cost 9.99, and for that price, you'll actually be able to obtain a five hour course full of full of so much good content. 
uh, where you guys will be able to learn how to create files like Excel files through a Python program. You guys will be creating a more graphical interface uh, where users can actually click buttons and enter uh, data, like filling out a form. Uh, and you guys will also be given completely free access to a whole other course where you guys will be able to uh, complete different programming challenges that I've set for you. And then I've also provided the solutions and explained them through video solutions and also uh, through comments in my code. So hopefully you guys will continue and go purchase that course at only $9.99. So thanks for watching and goodbye. Hey guys and welcome to the next lecture. So today we're going to be taking a look at lists. So lists are a bit more of an advanced concept and they will definitely come in handy within your programming career. Okay, so let's just close what we've done in the previous videos. Uh, we probably won't be needing a lot of the stuff that we've previously done uh, aside from printing the list itself. But let's just go ahead and give ourselves a title of uh, lists. And we can just save it into our Python crash course folder as lists. And hit save. Okay, so now from here we can we can figure out how you can declare a list. So Okay, so if you just had a list called list1, you can just say it's equal to an empty pair of square brackets. Now, that's how a list is stored within a pair of square brackets. Um, and there's also something called a 2D list, uh, which actually has several brackets inside of it as well. But that's not something that we look at in this course, but we'll look at it in... Uh, the more advanced course that I've provided you access to for only $9.99. So go ahead and purchase that course and you guys can learn what we're going to be learning now uh, and then building upon that knowledge with some more advanced programming concepts. But this is essentially how you declare a list uh, and this is just an empty list with no values whatsoever. But if you wanted to put values inside of it, so you can put numbers, you can put uh, strings, you can put booleans, you can put floats, whatever. You can just put the value and then with a comma separate them out. So say we had the first uh, five numbers. We just have one, two, three, four, and five all separated via a comma. And these are all integers because they haven't got uh, any apostrophes or anything around them uh, that make them a string. So they're all integers. Okay, so let's just go ahead and print that list out. So we can print list one, and if we print that out, we can see our list is shown like so. Okay, so within a list, to actually refer to a single element, so say you wanted to print out the number, say four, you actually have to use something called indexing. So indexing is where you can actually print, use square brackets after this, the list name, and you can put a number in here so we can print out the say second number but that's not actually the second number within the list that's the second index number now lists follow index numbers so the first item within the list uh, is actually uh, stored at an in index number of zero so it starts from zero one two three and four and then we've got here this is the index number that we're referring to so we want the number four to be printed out. So if we do zero, one, two, three. So four, oh sorry, three. So if the number four is a third value within the list. And if we run that, that will print out the number four because that's the third index position or third index item within the list. Now this might be slightly complicated to get your head around and might just take a little bit of uh, a pause to think about it and also go back in the video and listen again to what I've said um, but hopefully you do understand it and if you don't you can always leave me a message and I'll try to uh, make it a bit more clearer in your mind maybe provide you with uh, a short article that you can read or something that would make it a bit more clear okay so now say we wanted to print a specific range of items within the list say we wanted to start from the number two and go all the way up to the number five but we did we wanted to ignore the number one so what you could do is, so let's just 
comment this printing a range of items in the list so we can just do this first referring to list one because that's the name of the list then use our square brackets and we actually say it's going to be the first element first index sorry and then that goes all the way up to the fourth index so what you can do is one colon four and that print it all the way up to the fourth index okay so zero one two three four now that is the fourth element but what this does is it doesn't uh, it doesn't include the fourth element so if we were to type in five it will work because it's going uh, from the first index to the fourth index or fifth index but not including the fourth in not including the fifth index so it doesn't include this number now say if you just wanted to go all the way to the end you can just get rid of this five and you can run that and that will do the same thing it will just go all the way to the end of the list it's just one uh, onwards essentially that's what all that means and it does the same thing as it did before just in a slightly shorter code Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at how to add elements to the list. So appending to a list. That's just the keyword for it. It's called append. And that's how you can just add on uh, different items to the end of the list. So say we wanted to append the number six just to add it onto the list. So we can do uh, list one dot append and we can add the item that we want to add on in the in between these brackets. So that's the six and the list one is obviously the name of the list the variable name and we use the function dot append uh, to add it on now if we were to print list one you should see the number six having been added on to the end of the list okay so that's pretty straightforward that's how you append to a list and now we can also take a look at how you can change values within the list so say we wanted to change the value one, we wanted to change it to a zero. So all you have to do, okay, let's just call this change values in a list. Now all you have to do is refer to list one, then refer to the index position of the value that you want to change. So this is the zeroth index because it's the first element and we can just give it the value zero. Okay, so let's just reiterate. So that's the name of the list, the variable name, and then we've got in between square brackets, the index position. So that is zero, because this is the zeroth element in the list. So zero, one, two, three, four. And that's just how it works. And we can equate that to zero, making it zero. And then if we were to print list one, you'll notice that it has been changed to a zero after running this code okay so now if we wanted to delete an element from our list how would you do that so if we were to delete the number six say we just added it on if we wanted to delete that how would we do that you can actually just use del short for delete and it's just called list one and we can give it the index position of the number that we wanted to delete and that's obviously the last index so we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 so it's the fifth index position oh, and we need to go ahead and print out our list just to show you guys that it's been deleted and you can see that it's gone completely from the list okay so that's all you have to do to delete a list now let's take a look at another method which is finding the length of a list now if you wanted to find a length of a list um, you could just use the inbuilt len operator within python so len list one and you can all you you have to do you can do this all in one line if you just wanted to print out the length you just do it like so or you can even uh, say length you can create a variable name called length equals len list one and that will just store the length of the list and then inside here you can just print out the length um, so yeah you could just do it like that print the length okay so if we go ahead and run that 
you'll notice it prints a length of five. That's because there's five items. So one, two, three, four, five. And it doesn't use the indexing system. It doesn't go zero, one, two, three, four, because obviously there's not four items within the list. It actually counts the individual items within the list. And that's just what length does. Okay, so there's quite a few methods and there's a couple more that we're gonna be taking a look at. So, how about adding two lists together? So say we had a list two and we have the values, say we have one comma six and we wanted to add them two lists together. So we, what we could do is we could do list three equals list one plus list two. And we can print list three. Now all this will do is it will just literally add the two lists together. Um, it's the same as doing list, so it's the same as this. So list one is just one, two, oh sorry, zero, two, three, four, and five. Obviously it is because we've just changed it throughout the whole sequence of this code. And if we add it to list two, which is just one comma six, all it does is puts these two values on the end of these values and forms a single list. So if we just, let's just get rid of that line. And if we just run that, you notice it would do exactly what we just said it would do. Okay, so now how about if we wanted to print something, print a number of like, We'll print a list several times. How about if we wanted to do that? So obviously you don't want to be printing out, you don't want to be repeating yourself a lot within the code. Uh, you just want to print out the list, uh, say four times. So let's say, let's give a variable name, repeat or rep list, and we'll give it the values we we'll say hello, and we can give it world. You notice I put a space here. You don't really need that. It just looks a bit nicer sometimes. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, and say we wanted to print it four times, we can do print rep list, and we can use some arithmetic and multiply by four, so it prints it out four times. And there you go. We've got hello world, hello world. Hello world and hello world. So that's what you have to do to print out the list four times. Okay, so we've only really just scratched the surface of um, what we can do in Python. And there's far more built-in built uh, functions that you can use uh, to help you out with lists. So there's, there's so much more out there. Um, so you guys can go and take a look at like all the articles there are online to help you guys figure out new methods to be able to do with lists. And there's also my next course where you guys, you guys can go and purchase that. And there's so much more in there which can help you with lists and also other aspects of Python. Okay, so thanks for watching and be sure to go check out the if, elif and else statements video which is the next lecture. And we're so close to the end, only two more lectures left. So thanks for watching and goodbye. Hey guys and welcome to the next lecture. So today we're going to be taking a look at if, elif, and else statements. So let's go ahead and close our lists code. Okay, and we can open up a new ideally. And we can give it the title if, el, elif, elif, and else. And we can save that into our Python crash course folder as if, elif, and else. And hit save. Okay, so what is an if statement? Well, an if statement is just where you can see if something, if, if a condition is met, then do something. Um, uh, and then elif or else if, it's also known as else if that condition isn't met, uh, or if, if another condition is met and the first condition isn't met, then do something else. And then the last statement else, so else if none of the other conditions are met, then do something else or just yeah that's essentially all it is I'll be showing you guys in um, a bit more detail so you guys get a better understanding so we're also going to quickly just take a look at how to get a user input uh, by using something called the input function 
Okay, so say we wanted a user to enter the their age. You can just get age equals input enter your age. That's essentially all you need to enter their age. But what we want is we want an integer. So we can actually convert this, the number they enter, into an integer just by surrounding it with int and then brackets. And that's essentially all input is. You can also do string if we wanted them to enter a string, but obviously age is a number, so that wouldn't work. And we can also do float, but people don't normally enter their numbers in decimal places, so obviously we're not going to be uh, accounting for that situation. Uh, but if we go ahead and run this, you'll notice that the user can enter their age, and we they can just put the number 34 and click enter. And so far, that's all our program does but soon it will be so much more. Okay, so that's essentially input statements. Now let's go ahead and take a look at if, elif, and else. So we can say if age is greater than 18 or greater than an equal or equal to, because obviously 18 is an adult, we're gonna say print new or an adult. And then elif age is say less than 18. Print you are young. And then we can also say uh, we can say elif age is say greater than oh actually let's leave it at that for now okay let's go ahead and run that and then we can enter our age we can say 63 you are an adult just as expected now if we test it with a younger age let's say 17 you are young Okay, so that's essentially what if and elif statements do. So if their age, the age they enter is greater than 18, then you're an adult. Uh, and then if elif, so else if, so if, if this statement isn't followed, then it goes, then the code goes to this statement and follows this code. And then if this code isn't, this statement isn't followed, then it will go to another code. But obviously they have to be one of these two things. But then if we were to get rid of the equals, and say else and then it would print you are 18 okay so just remember the syntax as well the syntax is just um, the like path Python language like how you enter the code like the different punctuation stuff you use so remember there's a colon here uh, after each of these statements and you don't actually need brackets around them. You need that in C though, which is obviously a slightly more uh, advanced language that we're not going to be taking a look at just yet. Uh, and then that's essentially, yeah, and then the indentation obviously as well actually. And that's essentially all you need to really remember. Okay, so now the user is going to enter 18 and because, it, so the line of code will just go through this. So if age is greater than 18, 18 isn't greater than 18, um, so it won't do this then and if age is less than 18 age isn't less than 18 so it won't do this else it will do this so it knows that it's 18 just by following these simple steps okay so that's pretty much it for if elif and else statements you can also swap these out for all the different comparison operators that we saw so you can say not equal to uh, equal to uh, greater than and or equal to, less than or equal to, and, and so forth. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. And now in, our, in the other course, I actually teach you Boolean operators, where we'll be taking a look at and, or, and, and not. Now these are different operators which are very useful uh, when it comes to if, elif, and else statements. Okay, so I hope this was useful, um, and guys, we're almost at the end of the course, just one more video left, 
about functions which are slightly more advanced and will help you out greatly within your programming career. Okay, so thanks for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, and welcome to the next lecture. So today we're going to be taking a look at functions, which are essentially methods that help us to uh, reduce the amount of code that we use uh, by keeping and keep our com code much more compact and straight to the point. Okay, so we can go ahead and close this tab. We'll keep this tab open because we're going to be use using some uh, concepts from this. And we can just go up here. We can open up a new file, which is a bit more quicker than just going down here. Uh, and then obviously we can give it a title of functions. And we can save it into our Python Crash Course folder as functions. Okay, now from here, we can declare our first ever function. Now, to do that, you just do def, and we can give it a name. So this is the function name. We can call it main. So that's literally just the function name. Now, main is a common function name just for the uh, main func like the main function where all the bulk of the code is the main stuff obviously and then you need brackets at the end and a colon okay and then we can start entering the contents of the function so this main function can just essentially um, we can be like it can lead you to another function where you, the user can enter their age. And then it can also lead you to another function where the user can enter their name, and then another function where they can enter their gender or something. So what we can do is we can just say, we can say this, this is the main function. So that's just the main function. And if we wanted to end the function, you have to use the name of the function followed by a set of brackets. Now we can go ahead and run that. And it just runs that function. Now if we've got rid of this, these that little main bit at the bottom, and we run it now, nothing happens because we haven't closed the function and declared that it can start running. But if we wanted to just test it out, you can just call main and it will just run the function, which is very nifty and useful to help you when you code. But we, we want main to run because it's obviously the main function within the code. Now, if we were to create a new function, so we can create above main, and we can call it def age, where we can find out the age of the user. So we can obviously just use this code. Uh, so we can just copy, yeah, we can just copy this code. And then we can actually do something where we return the age. Uh, so I'll explain this in a second. It's a bit more complicated than you would originally understand. But let's just say you can call the age function. So all this is going to do is just going to call the age function. And it's going to return the age. So what we want to do is we want to say we create a variable called user age equals age. Okay. Okay, so now you guys probably won't understand a lot of this, but that's what I'm going to explain right now. Okay, so all that's going on is we've got the main function, and this function's been uh, like ended with uh, main and then brackets, and then we've got print. This is the main function, just to outline that this is the main function. And then the next line, we've got user use oh, let's say user age use user age equals age and then parentheses or brackets uh, and then that just runs this function that just runs this function and within this function we actually obtain the user's age so we do def age equals or we do def age and then we do age equals input your age and then we return the age so all that's going to do is it's going to pass the age back into this this thing. So it's going to essentially replace this thing uh, with their age. Uh, and then we've uh, uh, assigned it to the variable user age just so it can store that value. Now this is obviously slightly more complex. You can just you can obviously just take this line, copy it, and put it down here. Oops, put it down down here. Put it put it down here. 
Um, and then get rid of that. And then that's obviously doing the same thing as it would be doing otherwise. But just to help you show, just help show you uh, what functions can actually do, I've done it this way. And then we can actually go ahead and print user age at the end, just to show you what it's actually doing. So now it's obviously printed. This is your main function, and it's gone over here. It needs to run the age function, and then it's gone over here, and then we've entered 13, and then it's just printed out the user's age. Just to show you what's actually like, how it's going through this, we're going to say this is now the age function, uh, and then we can go back. And this is now the main function. Just to show you how it's switching between the different functions. So we're now in the age function, and when it, after entering that, it returns the age, goes back to the main function, and then says this is now the main function, and then prints out the user age, which is just how we expected everything to happen. Okay, so that's essentially what functions can do. It's obviously slightly uh, complicated. Uh, if you didn't understand it, just drop me a message. I'll get back to you and uh, give you a bit more information on how they work. And I'll, you guys can also go and uh, go ahead and uh, get my other course for nine ninety nine. A huge discount. Originally, it cost fifty pounds, which is just obviously a huge discount. I'm giving you guys, um, and it's perfect to help you guys understand functions in far more detail and also take a look at some far more advanced concepts. Okay, so thanks for watching. Be sure to go ahead and take a look at my other courses. So thanks for watching and goodbye.